Mr. Police, and thank you to the President Singh, the President of the Office of the Quorum Welcome, the Quorum Welcome Indian Medical Association, and uh, I'll keep it short as far as possible. Thank you. The next slide, please. See, lung transplantation is a very high technology medicine. It has been accepted as a modality for treatment of very advanced stage lung disease, that is, end stage lung disease. Is it common or uncommon? If you look at Western world from the year 1990, nearly 25,000 lung transplants have been done all over the world. It happens around 3,000 to 4,000 lung transplants every year. Next slide. So the first uh, successful single lung transplant was reported by Cooper from the University of Toronto in 1986. Then they went for uh, bilateral lung transplant. Initially started as a in-block double lung transplant and there was some difficulty so uh, it was abandoned. Nowadays it is being done as a bilateral sequential single lung transplant. Next thing. So we did our first transplant, successful single lung transplant in December 16th last year at Global Hospital. The recipient was a young gentleman from Iraq. He was diagnosed with diffuse lung disease and he came to us with oxygen, he was airlifted and uh, we treated him with oxygen and all the things, advising him to lung transplant. In fact, he, did, he didn't have an attender, so he went back. Next month again he came back saying that uh, he doesn't want to live his life with continuous oxygen therapy all the time. So we offered him a lung transplant and he did very well. Next week. Now, what are the indications for lung disease? Where are you going to do the lung transplant? Now, the primary indication is any lung disease with the end stage situation where the patient is already oxygen dependent. The commonest indication is uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, then restricted lung disease including idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, then comes cystic fibrosis, alpha 1 anti infection disease in C, and primary pulmonary hypertension. Next slide. Now, when you see these patients with end-stage lung disease. What do you mean by end-stage lung disease? That they are stuck at home, they are stuck with oxygen and they can't move out. And uh, they have a fairly good left ventricular function, kidney function, liver function and their exp the expected life expectancy it does not exceed more than two years. And they are in class 3 or class 4 symptoms with a stable nutritional status, motivated for rehabilitation and an intact psychological support system. The commonest indication is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. These patients nowadays do well with home oxygen therapy. A concentrator, oxygen concentrators are available, small portable oxygen cylinders are available. They are permitted to carry wherever they want, including commercial flights allow the use of portable oxygen concentrators. With the extensive and widespread use of portable oxygen, there is a significant improvement in the quality of these patients. So what we do is we subject them to Pulmonary function test, and if their post expiratory volume in one second is less than 30%, then at that stage only we suggest lung transplant. Next slide. In these patients, we expect a continued deterioration despite optimal medical and surgical therapy, including smoking cessation, maximal bronchodilatory treatment, rehabilitation at home, long term oxygen therapy, and if possible, lung volume reduction. Next slide. And you should also look at associated factors like hypoxemia. You do your blood gas, you will be knowing how much PO2 is, how much PCO2 is, and there is a continuous weight loss, frequent hospitalization, repeated exacerbation. So there is an objective index that has been formed to be known as board index, which includes body mass index, degree of flow obstruction, degree of dyspnea, and the six minute exercise test. When the patient presents you with a board index of five or greater, the patient is referred for a lung transplant. Next so, among these diffuse lung disease, chronic obstructive lung disease, there is a small subgroup known as restrictive lung disease. These people are even more suffering because they develop idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, which is an unusual interstitial variant. That is, the membrane between the alveoli and the blood vessel undergoes thickening and undergoes fibrosis. The patient is otherwise perfect, they are all right, 45 year old young man with uh, interstitial pulmonary fibrosis, doesn't get enough oxygen, his PO2 goes down, his PCO2 goes up. And uh, these patients, even with a PP1 of 50%, 
person predicted they do not do well. Next <coughs> question. The other common indication is primary pulmonary potential. This primary pulmonary potential is a silent killer. The once the patient is diagnosed as a primary pulmonary potential, the mean survival is about two and a half years. There are certain indicators which indicate poor survival that includes class three, class four symptoms. Elevated mean atrial pressure, mean pulmonary atrial pressure, decrease in the cardiac intact. When the mean PA pressure goes above 85, they don't live more than one year. And uh, nowadays, there is a significant improvement in the lifestyle of these patients with the availability of prostocycline. The response to acidation therapy in the form of prostocycline indicates an improved survival. Next please. So, what when we see these patients with the primary pulmonary potential, the majority of them are given long term prostocycline therapy. And it has demonstrated improved survival, improved exercise capacity, and better quality of life. The transplant is indicated only if the patient cannot tolerate or fail prostocycline therapy. Even in the patient develops a right heart heart dysfunction after prostocycline therapy, you can still go ahead with single transplant. There are some contraindications, like because I told you it's a high technology medicine, which involves immunosuppressive therapy and it requires a lot of postoperative care, and lung is very prone for infection. It's the only solid organ which is exposed to atmosphere. After you transplant, the patient breathes every day in and out, the atmosphere is polluted air and it gets into infection very early. So you have to carefully look into the contraindications like malignancy, hepatitis. <coughs> advanced multi-organ dysfunction, current cigarette smoking, poor nutritional status, and lack of social support. Next slide, please. So this is to just show the statistics from the International Society of Heart Lung Transplant. Every year, around 3,000 to 2,500 to 3,000 lung transplants are happening all over the world, which includes half of the them undergo single lung, and the remaining half undergoes bilateral lung. Next slide, please. And this is the commonest indication, as I told you, in Western countries, COPD, the commonest indication is the empathy in our chest. Cystic fibrosis is fortunately rare in our part of the world. And next comes idiopathic pulmonary protection and branch access. Next slide, please. So, this is the age group at which these patients undergo lung transplant. You see, commonly, majority of them are in the age group 50 to 60. Above 65, we do not recommend lung transplant, but rare cases, people who undergo lung transplant up to the age of 70. Next So, to do Lung transplant when you have tuberculosis and you have malaria, when you have polio, when you want to do lung transplant is a high technology medicine. Whereas if the patient is young and the patient is struggling for blood, can afford, can undergo lung transplant. It's a big team work, it involves a lot of infrastructure, expertise and economy. We involve surgeon, pulmonologists, anesthetists, nurses, physiotherapists, microbiologists, nephrologists, pathologists, and a coordinator for all these together. So our first single lung transplant in the country was a 33 year old United patient. I told you earlier, severe lung disease, interstitial disease, bullet, multiple half hospitalization. Next slide, please. He was hospitalized many times, earlier came once and then back. Next slide. So this is the preoperative x-ray test showing extensive interstitial lung disease on both sides. Next slide, please. Preoperative high resolution CT test. Next slide, please. And uh, first operatively, we did fairly well. We did a right single lung transplant. Next slide, please. To the post operative HRCT. So, the donor was an 18 year old male who is an AC mechanic. They had fallen from height, son of a driver. They came, building forward to donate. He donated his heart, liver, over the right lung, over the kidney, cornea, and skin. Next slide, please. The second patient that we have done is a 47 year old lady with interstitial lung disease, heavily oxygen dependent with a very low vital capacity and a very low FEV1, next slide please. She was admitted in Germany for a couple of times and uh, they are recommended lung transplant. They are found very difficult to get a donor, so they moved to India, next slide please. So this is also a preoperative x-ray test, next slide. Preoperative HRCT, next slide. Postoperative HRCT, next slide. Postoperative HRCT is showing the good lung on the right side, next slide please. So the, here the donor was a 38 year old male, he sustained head injury after falling from birth, he was declared brain dead at Conrad Rajaji Hospital, Conrad Rajaji Gandhi Hospital, he was non-smoker and uh, now are we doing experiment in the form of lung transplant, certainly no. We looked at the case of this doctor from Argentina, she is a professor of endocrine pathology, 
is the leading researcher on fishing engineering. She was awarded Dame as well as Lifetime Achievement Award. Now she is 72 years old and she has written a scientific book on uh, lung transplant along with uh, Nicholas Banner and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dr. Wendy Akko. Next day, please. The uh, interesting thing is she has her and heart and lung transplant in 1995 by Sir Akko. She when she was 55 years old. So see that day after 17 years she is doing well. Next day. So Tamil Nadu has a very high rate of organ donation compared to the other countries. Each year about uh, 100 people donate organs and uh, about out of this 100, at least 20 to 30 lungs will be young patients, non-smoker with no injury to the chest wall. Next year. Are there enough donors? Certainly yes. Every year nearly 1000 people die on the road each month in Tamil Nadu. Next year. The number is nearly 12,000 people. Next year. So are there enough patients who require lung transplant? Yes, lung transplant in the next day. We get a lot of queries and the general practitioners will be knowing much better than next day. So once we did uh, this first lung transplant, we got a lot of queries both from abroad as well as India and we are evaluating these patients next day. So what is the long term result? The only year survival rate is around 74% and the 10 year survival rate is 46%. This is considering the dismal prognosis of natural history of these patients who are oxygen dependent. Next we are still learning how to fly. Thank you. So my only question is, is this like a kidney donor? from a relative? Is it possible for a man? Uh, it's possible. What happens if a patient is a child, the father can donate one lobe, not one lung, and the mother can donate one lobe. So the child with cystic fibrosis, who is on ventilator, cannot survive, can undergo bilateral lobe or leaping lung transplant. Not yet done in this country. How much it costs? Sir, it's a very high technology medicine, but it's cheaper than the Iota of Corolla, which is 20 less. This is half. What are your planning global hospital? What's the cost? 10 minutes. For pregnant women with primary pulmonary hypertension, is there any way of treating them for emergency patients with surgery or any other? There is no way you are going to treat them. Ladies, primary pulmonary hypertension, non emergency, no way. Even now, she will not be able to even to go lung transplant. What they can be supported on new is no lung devices for a maximum of 30 days. And the, even during that time, the child may not survive. Which is the patient has to take lifelong immunosuppress. Yeah, it's like any other like special organ transplant, like uh, kidney transplant. They have to be on acrolimus, cell cell, and the small dose of steroids.